IXL section P5, evaluate recursive formulas for sequences. Let's talk about what a recursive formula is. A recursive formula is a formula that defines each term of a sequence using preceding terms. Recursive formulas must always state the initial term or terms of the sequence. Okay, so let me, let's look at what that means because I have an example here in the middle. Uh, the example of a recursive formula is this right here. This part right here is the recursive formula. Okay, the first thing I want to point out is the letter N. The letter N stands for the term that they're asking you to find in the sequence. For example, uh, you see where that little N is? Right here, there's a 1. That means the first term. A1 means the first term in the sequence. The first term is the number 10. They want you to find the second and the third term in the sequence. That's what that little 2 and the little 3 represent. So A1 is the first term in the sequence. They want you to find the second and the third term using this recursive formula. How am I going to do that? Okay, look. This is how I'm going to do that. Okay? When I'm looking for the second term in the sequence, I substitute the number 2 where N is. Okay, where that n is, I'm going to put in the number 2 because I'm now looking for the second term in the sequence. So basically, n equals 2 right now. If n equals 2, that means this will say a with a n minus 1 down here. When I put a 2 right there, the 2 minus 1 makes this a 1. And the problem says to subtract 1 from whatever this term is. So basically, let me explain it another way. This means to get the second term, to get the second term equals the first term in the sequence minus 1. Whatever the first term in the sequence is, minus 1. In this case, the first term in the sequence, it says it right here, A1 is 10. A1 is 10. So that means you're going to do 10 minus 1 to get the second term in the sequence, which is 9. Now when I go to do, let me, let me, so we got 10 and we got 9. Let me erase it and do the third term. All right, so we got 10. And we got 9 in the sequence. This is A1, A2. Now I'm going to get A3, which is the third term in the sequence. Okay, so to get the third term in the sequence, you're putting a 3 here and a 3 here. All right, so to get the third term in the sequence, you have to get 3 minus 1 is 2. So that means this will become the second term minus 1. To get the third term, I get the second term. The third term equals the second term in the sequence minus 1. The second term in the sequence is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. If that seems confusing, give it a second. After we, I do a couple of examples, that you should start to get it. Let me just uh, explain that in Spanish real quick. Okay. Um, okay, una fórmula recur recursiva. Es una fórmula que define cada término de una secuencia util utilizando los términos precedentes. Las fórmulas recursivas siempre deben indicar el término o términos iniciales de la secuencia. Ok, así que la fórmula recursi recursiva es esta parte de aquí. Esto es la fórmula de que estoy hablando. Ok, um, y... La N representa el término que estamos buscando siempre. Ok, así que inicialmente te están dando esta información. A1, el 1 este quiere decir que este, este es el primer término en la secuencia. El primer término en la secuencia es el número 10. Y nosotros tenemos que encontrar, aquí dice que tenemos que encontrar el segundo y tercer término en la secuencia. Okay. Así que para encontrar el segundo término, voy a, voy a sustituir para la n el número 2, aquí y también aquí. Cuando yo simplifico el 2 menos 1, la fórmula me va a decir que el segundo término es igual a el primer término menos 1. Y el primer término nos dice aquí que es 10. 10 menos 1 nos da 9. Así que ahí está el primer término, aquí está el segundo término. Eso es una A, no un 9. A. Ok. Ahora para encontrar el tercer término voy a poner un 3 donde está la N. 3 aquí y 3 aquí. Cuando simplifico esto, 3 menos 1 me da 2. Así que para encontrar el tercer término 
tengo que hacer el segundo término menos 1. ¿Ok? El segundo término era 9. 9 menos 1 es 8. ¿Ok? Ahí están mis respuestas. El segundo término en la secuencia es 9. El tercer término es 8. Let's look at another example. Same style. ¿Ok? Otro ejemplo. So again, here's our recursive formula. Aquí está la fórmula recursiva. ¿Ok? El primer término es 4. The first term is 4. That's what the A1 means. The first term in the sequence is 4. All right, so they want me to find the second and the third term. I'm going to do the second one first. And by the way, this is why it's called a recursive formula. Because it, in order for this formula to work, I need to use the term that came before the one I'm looking for. So when I go to look for the second term, I need the first term in order to do it. I can't do it without knowing what the first term is. If they don't tell me what A1 is, I can't do it. Anyways, to find the second term, I got to substitute a 2 where the N is. A 2 there and a 2 here. When I put the 2 here, 2 minus 1 is 1. So the formula will be simplified and it will say this. The second term equals 5 times the first term. Let me just say that in Spanish real quick. Okay, um, aquí está la fórmula recursiva. Se llama una fórmula recursiva porque para poder usarla necesito el término que viene antes que este. Si ellos no me dicen inicialmente que es el primer término, no lo puedo hacer porque lo necesito para esta fórmula. Por eso se llama una fórmula recursiva. Ok, así que para encontrar el segundo término, tengo que sustituir el número 2 donde está la n. Aquí y aquí. Cuando yo pongo un número 2 aquí y simplifico el 2 menos 1, me va a dar el 1 que está aquí. Así que ahora simplificado, la fórmula dice... El segundo término es igual a 5 multiplicado por el primer ter término. All right, so the second term is equal to 5 times the first term. It says here the first term is 4. So the second term is 20. The third term is going to equal to, when I put a 3 here, this will be 3 minus 1, which is 2. So the third term in the sequence will be, whoops, let me write that better. The third term in the sequence will be, 5 times the second term in the sequence. El tercer término en la secuencia sería 5 multiplicado por el segundo término. So the third term is going to be 5 times the second term, which is this one right here. El segundo término, este aquí, el 20. So I'm going to put a 20 here. Okay, so the answer is going to be 100. Um, by the way, once you start getting the hang of it, look how you could do it a little quicker than what I'm doing, Okay. Once you realize that this is five times the term that came before it, once you realize that, you could just go, oh, five times four is 20, and 20 times five is 100. I'm just multiplying each one times five to get the next one. Once you get the hang of the easy ones, you could do them like that, all right? A la vez que se dan cuenta de cómo se hace, hay muchos de ellos que se pueden hacer más rápido que lo que yo estoy haciendo. Eh, este se deben dar cuenta que es 5 multiplicado por el término que viene antes de, del que estamos buscando. Así que para encontrar el segundo término, multiplico el término anterior por 5. 5 por 4 es 20. Para encontrar el tercer término, multiplico este por 5, así que me da 100. Así que 4 por 5, 20. 20 por 5, 100. El próximo sería 100 por 5, que me da 400. Eh, 100 por 5, que me da 500. <risa> Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right, so look, this, whenever it says a n minus 1, that means the previous term. So you're just getting the previous term and adding 3 to it if you want to try to do it faster. All right, so a1 is 0. a2 is going to be 3. a3, by the way, it says find a3. We got to find the third term. Tenemos que encontrar el segundo término. The first term is 0, the second term is 3, and the... That one's easy. That one's really fast. All right. Cuando vean esto, esto siempre quiere decir el término anterior. Así que le estamos sumando tres al cada término anterior. Así que este, el segundo término sería 0 más 3, que me da 3. El tercer término sería um, 3 más 3, que es 6. All right, that one was cake. All right, so let's look at this one. Now we got to find three answers. The third, the fourth, and the fifth term. Ahora tenemos que encontrar tres respuestas, el, el término tercero, cuarto y quinto. All right, so it tells me what the first term is and what the second term is. Me está dando lo que es el primer término en la secuencia y el segundo. 
All right, so let me first find the third term by substituting 3 wherever n is, okay? Voy a encontrar el tercer término substituyendo la, el número 3 donde quiera que se, esté la letra n. When I do that, I'm going to get this. A to the third power, not to the third power, sorry. A3 equals A2 plus A1. All right, that'll be the formula. So A3 equals A2 plus A1. Uno más cero is one. All right. Now, once I got the pattern, look, A4 is going to equal A3 plus A2. All right, A4 is going to equal A3 plus A2, 1 plus 1, which is 2. A5 is going to equal A4 plus A3. All right, A4 plus A3, 2 plus 1 is 3. That's it, I'm done. They're not that difficult once you get the hang of it, okay? Do them the cool, once you get the hang of it, do it the cool way, like Mr. Yu does it. Follow the instructions of your sensei. Okay, a la vez que le, se dan cuenta cómo se hace, traten de hacerlo más rápido, porque no es tan difícil. All right, um, all right, so again, find A3, A4, and A5. They give me the first term, the second term. All right, so I'm going to find the third term, so I'm substituting the number three. So to find the third term, it's going to be, I put a three here and a three here. Okay, it's going to be the second term minus the first term. Now I got to subtract. All right, ahora tengo que restar es el, para encontrar el tercer término, el segundo término menos el primero. Okay, now look so that you don't mess this up. Four minus negative one. There's going to be two negative signs there. And I could totally see you guys, some of you guys uh, messing that up. Four minus negative one. The two negatives become a positive. Esos dos negativos se cambian a un positivo porque es cuatro menos negativo uno. If you don't do, if you only put one minus sign, you're going to get it wrong. Si solamente ponen un signo de retar, lo van a coger mal. All right, so this one's five. All right, now it's always the previous one minus the other previous one. The previous one minus the one that was two numbers before. I don't know what's the easiest way to say that, but five minus four will be the next one. Five minus four, which is one. And then this one will be 1 minus 5, which is negative 4. Again, for this one right here, I did 5 minus 4, and that gave me 1. For this one right here, I did 1 minus 5, which gives me negative 4. If you put positive 4 because you're not good at integers, you're going to get it wrong. You got to get the sign correct, so be careful with that. Okay, tienen que poner el signo correcto, si no se lo van a marcar mal. All right. So let me go to the next one. Okay, this one, they're changing it up a little bit more. They're making it slightly more complicated. So again, my first term is 2. My second term is negative 4. I got to find A3, A4, and A5. All right, now look at this formula. All right, this one says, okay, I'm gonna sub for the third term, I'm going to substitute a 3 here, a 3 here, and a 3 here. Para el tercer término, voy a substituir el número 3 donde quiera que esté N. When I, cuando simplifico eso, when I, when I simplify that, it's going to say a to the eighth, I keep wanting to say a to the third power, but that's not a to the third power, that's a3. a3 equals negative 2 times a to the, a2 <laughs> plus a1. So the third term equals negative 2 times the second term plus the first term. El tercer término es igual a negativo 2 multiplicado por el segundo término más el primer término. All right, so A3 is going to equal negative 2 times, the second term is negative 4. El segundo término es negativo 4. Plus the first term, which is positive 2, más el primer término, que es positivo 2. So the third term is going to equal negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8, plus 2, that's 10. All right, now let's do the fourth term. Okay, the fourth term, el cuarto término, sería negative 2 times uh, the third term plus the second term. All I'm doing is like, I looked at this one and I subtracted one from each. Uh, wait, did I say that right? No, I added one. I said that wrong. I added one to each of these. So the fourth term is going to be negative 2 times the third term plus the second term. Okay, simplemente le sumé un número a cada uno de estos. El cuarto término. 
va a ser igual a negativo 2 multiplicado por el tercer ter término más el segundo término. All right, so when I substitute, it's going to be negative 2 times the third term is 10 and the second term is negative 4. When I simplify that, it's going to be minus 4. So the fourth term is going to be negative 2 times 10 is negative 20. This positive and this negative become a negative. Okay? And negative 20 minus 4 is negative 24. Okay, and for the fifth term, again, I'm going to do the same little trick. Where, where am I? All right. So a5, a5 will equal uh, negative 2 times a3 plus a, did I mess that up? Yeah, I did. a5, well, my bad. I should have looked at this one. Sorry. Sorry. That was a mistake. I'm human. All right. Um, this is a 4. You know what? Let me, it's getting messy. Let me write that again. I'm running out of space. All right. a5 is going to equal negative 2 times a4 plus a3. Now I wrote it right. Okay. All right. So the fifth term is going to equal negative 2 times the fourth term. The fourth term is negative 24. Okay. Negativo 2 por el cuarto término, que es negativo 24, plus the third term, which is 10. Okay, so when I multiply these, I'm going to get 48 plus 10. So the fifth term is going to equal 58. Yeah, that was a little bit of work. Oh, well, they're not all going to be easy. All right. Um, one of the reasons why we're going over this is because there's stuff like this on your exam, your Algebra 1 exam, in your Algebra class, not in your Intensive Math class. Okay, so let's look at this one. This one's actually, this one I want to show you how, this one's an easy one, and I want to show you how quickly you could do it, right? Um, this is the, the okay, so we got to find all these, right? And um, first, let me do the first one slow, and then I'll explain how you could do it fast, all right? So the third term, I'm going to substitute a 3 there and a 3 there. The third term equals 2 times um, the first term. You know what? Let me write that better. The third term equals 2 times the first term. Because look, when I put a 3 here and a 3 here, whenever it says minus 2, they're talking about two terms before this one. All right? So basically, it's going to be 2 times this one over here. And I'm going to show you how you can do it fast. 2 times this one over here, so the third term is 10. All right, let me just say that in Spanish, and then I'll go through it quickly. Esta le quiero enseñar cómo se puede hacer rápido. A la vez que se, se van dando la, la cu cuenta de cómo, qué es lo que dice esta fórmula. Por ejemplo, si yo pongo un 3 aquí para el tercer término, aquí dice, en lugar de menos 1, dice menos 2. Así que eso quiere decir que está hablando de dos términos anterior. Así que la fórmula te está diciendo que multiplique por 2 el término que viene no anterior, pero dos términos anterior. Así que el tercer término va a ser 2 multiplicado por este número aquí, 5, que me da 10. El cuarto va a ser 2 multiplicado por este aquí, que me va a dar 4. All right. Um, the fifth term is going to be 2 times the third term. The third term was 10, so 20. The sixth term is going to be 2 times the fourth term, which is 4, so 8. If, you, if you're not following me, look. Let me write it like this so you can see what I mean. All right, to get this one, I got to multiply, not this one, but the one over here by 2, 10. To get this one, I got to multiply this one by 2, 4. To get this one, I got to multiply this one by 2, 20. That's what they're doing. To get this one, I got to multiply this one by 2, 8. That's the sequence. So whenever it says, uh, whenever it says, I wanted you guys to see the little n there, but whenever it says n minus 2, they're talking about the one that came two, two terms prior to the one that you're on. Cuando dice n menos 2, están hablando del término que viene dos términos anteriores. Anterior de que estamos hablando. All right? So look, same thing on this one. So you can do it fast. La misma cosa en este, así que se puede hacer rápido. All right, this is three times the one that came two terms prior. So for this one, three times this number, which is 12. 
For this one, three times this number right here, which is negative nine. For this one, three times this number right here, which is 36. For this one, three times this number right here, which is negative 27. Come on, that's not hard. Okay, así que este es tres, tres multiplicado por el número que vino dos números anteriores, ¿ok? Así que tres por, para coger el tercer término se multiplica este por tres. tres cuatro por tres me da doce. Para coger el cuarto término multiplico este por tres. Negativo tres por tres, negativo nueve. Para coger este multiplico doce por tres, que me da treinta y seis. Y para coger este multiplico negativo nueve por tres, que me da negativo veintisiete. Almost done, guys. We're almost there. All right, now this one. Okay, um, remember that when you multiply by 1 over 3, that means the same thing as dividing by 3. To multiply by 1 over 3, it means the same thing as dividing by 3. And I'll show you how if you don't get that. But remember that because that's an easy, uh, an easy way to think about a lot of these problems when you're multiplying by a fraction. The key is you got to have a 1 on the top. When you have a 1 on the top, it's the same as dividing by the number on the bottom. Okay, multiplicar por 1 sobre 3 es lo mismo que dividir por 3. Okay, so they want me to find the fourth term. Well, I can't do it until I find the second and the third term first. Okay, para encontrar el cuarto término, primero tengo que encontrar el segundo y el tercero. All right, so let's first find the second. Primero voy a encontrar el segundo término. All right, so... When I put a 2 here, this will be 2 minus 1, which is 1. Hold on, I'm sorry. Let me write that better. Okay, so it's that. Okay, so a to the, a, the second term in the sequence will be 1 over 3 times the first term in the sequence, which is 87. Okay, in case you forgot how to multiply fractions, I'm going to remind you right now. It's very simple. Si se le olvidó como multiplicar fracciones, miren, por favor, es fácil. 1 over 3 times 87. First, change the 87 to a fraction by putting a 1 on the bottom. Cambien el 87 a una fracción poniendo un 1 abajo. Now multiply the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. El de arriba por el de arriba y el de abajo por el de abajo. That means the same as, I got the same result as 87 divided by 3. Okay, me dio el mismo resultado que 87 dividido por 3. Now to divide it, 3 goes into 8 two times. 2 times 3 is 6, remainder 2. I bring down the 7, 3 goes into 27 9 times. 9 times 3 is 27, remainder 0. So the second term, that's not my answer, that's the second term. The second term is 29. Okay, now the third term, just divide that one by 3. To get the third term, you're dividing the one that came before it by 3. You know how I'm going to write it? Like that. Boom. Boom. That's how you write it. Okay, but they want me to find the fourth term. Before I do the fourth term, let me just say that real quick in Spanish. Okay, estamos dividiendo uh, el término que viene antes por tres en cada caso. Okay, así que como el segundo término me dio 29, el tercero sería 29 dividido por tres. Pero como me va a dar un decimal, lo voy a dejar así en, en forma de fracción. Una fracción simplificada. Así que lo puedo escribir así. En iExcel se escribe, pueden usarlo con este botón o sin, sin usar ese botón también se puede escribir así. All right. By the way, I left it like that because if you divide 29 by 3, you get a fraction. I'm, I'm sorry, you get a decimal. So to not get a decimal, I could just leave it in fraction form. Okay, now look. For the fourth term, please pay attention. Okay, I got to multiply or I got to multiply the one that came before it by, by 1 over 3. which is the same as dividing by three. But if you multiply them, look, the answer is easy, guys. It's not nothing difficult. I know, I know, I know, especially freshmen and middle schoolers. Really, what am I saying? Sophomores too. Uh, they get all freaked out because of fractions. Look how easy that was. One times 29 is 29. Three times three is nine. Wow, that was so tough. Guys, you got to learn how to use fractions. Trust me, it'll make your life a lot easier. And you, there's no need to be afraid of them. All right? Trust Mr. You on this. Ok, para, para coger la respuesta aquí, multipliqué el término anterior, que era 29 sobre, sobre 3, por 1 sobre 3. Multiplicando fracciones es bien fácil, no es nada difícil. 
Simplemente multipliqué el número de arriba por el de arriba, 1 por 29, me da 29, y el de abajo por el de abajo, 3 por 3, me da 9, y ya, lo dejé así. Esa es la respuesta, porque ya no se puede simplificar más. You cannot simplify that any further, so that's the answer. All right, let's look at this one. This one's a little more complicated, but still with fractions. All right, so remember, A with the N minus 1 means the previous term. Recuerden que A con el N menos 1 se está refiriendo al término anterior. Okay, so we got to find the fourth term. Tenemos que encontrar el cuarto término. All right, so to do that, first I got to find the second term and the third term. Para encontrarlo, primero necesito el segundo término y el tercer término. All right, so the second term is going to be 3 over 4 times the first term, which is 64. All right, so like I said before, let's multiply these fractions. To multiply them, turn the 64 into a fraction by putting a 1 on the bottom. Cambien el 64 a una fracción poniéndole un 1 debajo. Now, listen, there's a fast way to do it, but since I don't want to confuse anybody, I'm just going to do it the slow way. If you know how to do it the fast way, do it the fast way, no problem. All right? Hay una manera rápido de multiplicar esto, pero como no quiero confundir a nadie, lo voy a hacer solamente de la manera de pasito por ahora. Si saben hacerlo más rápido, háganlo de la manera más rápido. Así que de arriba por el de arriba y de abajo por el de abajo. The top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. All right, that's going to give me uh, 192 over 4. 192 over 4. Now, I'm going to divide. 192 divided by 4. Okay, 4 goes into 19. 4 times. 4 times 4 is 16. Remainder 3. I bring down the 2. 4 goes into 32 eight times. So the second term is 48. It's, I know I ran out of space there, but it's 48. El segundo término es 48. I'm going to erase all that so that I'll have more space. But just memorize the second term is 48. El segundo término es 48. All right, now to get the third term, I got to multiply 3 over 4 times the second term. Okay, para coger el tercer ter término, this is A3, tengo que multiplic multiplicar 3 sobre 4 por 48. Change the 48 to a fraction by putting a 1 on the bottom. So 4 times 1 is 4, 3 times 48 is going to give me 144. Okay, now divide 144 by 4. 4 goes into 14 3 times. 3 times 4 is 12. Remainder 2, I bring down this 4. 4 goes into 24 six times. 6 times 4 is 24. Remainder 0. So the third term is 36. We're almost there. Okay, now to find the fourth term, all right, which is the one we're looking for, I'm going to do 3 over 4 times the one that came before it, which is 36. Change the 36 into a fraction by putting a 1 on the bottom, and you're going to get... 108 over 4. 108 divided by 4. 4 goes into 10 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. Remainder 2. I bring down this 8. 4 goes into 28 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28. Remainder 0. Alright, so the answer for this one is 27. Alright. Okay. I believe this is might be the last slide. I'm not sure. No. All right. All right. So, um, guys, I think I'm going to cut it short because uh, I have too many examples and I'm trying to do two lessons in one day. All right. With that, you should be able to do all the examples, guys. And if you have any questions, you could always message me on Remind. But that concludes this uh, video.